President Obama says that U.S. forces will end most combat operations in Afghanistan by spring and switch to a support role. That's the outcome of a meeting between the president and Afghan leader Hamid Karzai in what's thought to be the final chapter of America's military presence in the country. But as RT's Ganesh Chikan now reports, the U.S. troops could remain in Afghanistan well beyond 2014. During his election campaign, President Obama may have sounded very resolute to leave Afghanistan in 2014, but the White House is now negotiating terms to stay there. The president said if U.S. forces stay, their role will be different. But critics argue it's an attempt to rebrand a military presence, which both the majority of Americans and Afghans oppose. Take a listen to what President Obama said about the mission after 2014. I think... It, it, you know, although, obviously, we're still uh, two years away, uh, I can say with assurance that this is a very different mission uh, and a very di different task and a very different footprint for the U.S. if uh, we are able to come to uh, an appropriate agreement. Now, one of the key points of the agreement that the president mentioned there, the key point probably, is immunity from prosecution for U.S. troops so that the Afghans cannot prosecute any American soldier if they commit a crime. That's the deal that the White House couldn't get from the Iraqi government. The U.S. wanted to keep some troops there but couldn't because of how vehemently opposed the Iraqis were to allowing the U.S. to further operate there with impunity. But with Hamid Karzai, it could be different. He indicated that he is willing to give that immunity Immunity, and that he's willing to bargain. Uh, besides, he knows that he's in power because of the Americans, and many experts believe his government will collapse in no time after Americans leave. But whatever post-2014 deal comes out of their negotiations, it might not be easy for Washington to sell it to the American people. Because despite the administration trying to present Afghanistan as a success story in many ways, they see it as a failure and don't understand why their troops should stay any further. Policymakers in Washington can't really come out and say that they don't want to walk away, just, just pack up and leave from such an important geopolitical position now that they'd spent billions and billions of dollars to have a presence there. But such geopolitical calculations may not sound very appealing to the American people at a time when the country is head over heels in debt. Despite pledges that U.S. troops in Afghanistan will switch to a mainly support role, Phyllis Bennis from Washington-based Institute for Policy Studies believes it's still a long way off before local forces will take full control. We're talking about an official acknowledgement by the two governments that now the Afghan military is in control. What that means is anybody's guess, but what it does not mean is that the U.S. troops are going to be pulled out early. There's a huge occupation force in the country. That's not going to be brought out in 2013, in the spring. What we're talking about is a, a claim that as of that time, the Afghan people, the Afghan military, the Afghan government, will officially be in charge. They will be in charge of the military. Now, the idea that the U.S. forces still there, or the NATO forces still there, are going to take their orders from the, the uh, Afghan military, I think, is rather spurious. That's certainly not going to happen. I don't think the Afghan government has the capacity to survive without massive U.S. support. That means both economic support and, crucially, military support. But his reliance on that support leads to, one, massive corruption, which is widely hated throughout the country. Karzai has very little public support in, in the country. And militarily, his, his very large army isn't capable of standing up to the other militias. It's one more militia. The U.S. leaving will leave his government and his own position in a very, in a, in a very precarious uh, moment, and he may well not survive that politically.